What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video on the Texas Rangers report and breaking news. John Daniels has been fired from the Texas Rangers, and this is three days after both John Daniels and Chris Young decided to part ways with Chris Woodward. And this is not too surprising of news, but then again, I really thought that John Daniels and the owners were really close, and this kind of starts a whole new era on Rangers baseball. Chris Young, who was brought in in 2020, will now take over all of the GM duties as well as the baseball operation duties. And that's what uh, John Daniels was doing before he brought in Chris Young. And I think this is extremely interesting because this starts a whole new era of Rangers baseball. I didn't think Chris... Um, excuse me, I didn't think John Daniels would get fired. I thought that they were starting to turn the rebuild around with um, adding in Chris Young. The farm system looked like they were developing well, and then we signed some good free agents. I thought the um, rebuild was on the upswing, but if you guys don't know, obviously um, Chris Young didn't make this decision. The owners made this decision, so it's, it's interesting that Three days ago, two guys that decided to fire Chris Woodward, um, one of those guys isn't even there. And like in the process of firing Chris Woodward, Chris Young and John Daniels were talking to the owners. So it, you have to think in their minds, they're like, okay, sure, we'll fire Chris Woodward. And then and a few days later, we're going to um, fire you as well. So let's break down John Daniels, what he did well, what he didn't do so well. So obviously... Um, he broke in with the Texas Rangers when he was 28 years old as the GM. And he brought us to our first two World Series in 2010 and 2011. So however you think of Chris Woodward, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, John Daniels. However you think about him, good or bad, he's still been our most successful GM to date. And if, I mean, Nelson Cruz catches the ball, then I mean... This would be a, maybe a little bit of a different story, but um, and then he brings us those 15 and 16 teams, which was, wasn't was as good as the World Series teams, but still competitive nonetheless. However, it's been a little bit of a different story the past six years, and I think that's the problem for um, John Daniels. I, I really don't think he'll have a problem finding another job in baseball. He has a solid resume going to two World Series. Uh, maybe he the Tigers might look for him after firing Alavila. But what's the what's the problem? The past six years, we have not won. We haven't been above 500, and I doubt this season will be above 500 as well. Um, and that's not too bad. Obviously, teams have to go through rebuild phases sometimes, but I think it was the indecisiveness of John Daniels to say, okay, we are going to be rebuilding, or like he didn't decide to tear it down right away, and that's – halted the rebuild to where it's taken six years. I do think next year we will be above 500. But I think it 2018 is probably, no, 2017 is probably when we should have started the rebuild. But it seems like from 2017 to 2020, we stayed in the middle and our record reflects that as well. But this is definitely flipping the script for the Rangers. And I think going to the offseason, Anything could be on, like anything could be a possibility. Did we expect um, Corey Seager and Marcus Simeon? No. Did we think that Chris Woodward would probably get fired in the off season? Yes. But did we think he's going to get fired this in the season? No. And did I really think John Daniels was going to get fired? Um, no, because I thought he had a good rapport with the owners. Much less during the regular season. No, that is crazy. Now. Yes, um, what's his face? Chris uh, Chris Young is taking over the baseball operations aspect. Will we bring in another GM just to get a bright mind in there? Theo Epstein could be a possibility, but I highly doubt it. Um, I wonder um, if they just bring in one of their own guys, like Michael Young, as the assistant GM, because a lot of times the um, titles in baseball kind of get um, a little murky, like, let's just say Chris Young had the title of GM, but he was probably acting more along the lines of an assistant GM. It's kind of hard to tell. Same 
with um, down in Oakland, like Billy Bean's not the GM, but he probably acts more like the GM. So maybe it's just bringing up Michael Young to the assistant GM. And he maybe has the same role that Chris Young did. That's something to note. Um, but yeah, we just haven't been winning for the past six years. I really am. I think anything this offseason is going to be crazy. I already know that. Um, is it going to be Judge? Is it going to be Rendon? Is it going to be a, cra- is a trade? Um, I've already been thinking of like trades, like maybe for Brandon Lowe. I really don't know. Um, because like I said, anything that you expect now, like there might be a guy that um you think is untradeable right now, could easily be traded for next year. Um, but honestly, I don't think um John Daniels was a terrible GM. I know a lot of Rangers fans give him a lot of hate. Um but if we're being honest, he was mediocre. Okay, um, you you're not a, you can't be a bad GM and get your team to um, two World Series and was it like four or five playoff appearances? Um, but he did make a lot of trades that didn't pan out. But a lot of GMs do that. Um, what's something we can give him credit for? I think the free agent signings of uh, Mike Meyer, Lance Lynn, Kyle Gibson, Martin Perez, and John Gray. All those were his signings. They all worked out. Um, Hunter Pence worked out as well. Um, so I think he was good at signing some of those undervalued free agents. But the thing that didn't work out for him, I think, had to be the farm system. Um, that had to be the biggest thing because we were looking how, if we think about how did our um, window of contention stop in 2017. When in 2016, we had the best record in the American League. And that's because one, Prince Fielder got hurt, ended his entire career. But it's because our farm system was garbage. And the guys that we um, were trusting on, and Mazzara, Odor, um, Gallo, uh, Profar, all those guys were garbage besides Joey Gallo. And that's that's a problem. And we still haven't been able to produce a solid starting pitcher ever since Derek Holland. And he wasn't that um, amazing either. So that's been his downfall. Obviously, he's had some trades that panned out. Some that That's just baseball. But it's definitely, um, I think it has to be the farm system that that's hurt him. And if we got some of those picks right, I'm not saying you're going to get every single pick right. Um, but let's just say pro far panned out. Um, and yeah, Profar pans out and maybe Odor. I don't think our window of contention closes, but you have to look at other teams and not all their prospects pans out, pan out like the Dodgers, but they still find a way. Um, I'll get to some of your guys' comments, but this marks a whole new era of baseball. Um, and just a note, Theo Epstein is working in, MLB with the MLB right now. That's where um, Chris Young was working. So you never know if there's the connection there. And what are we trying to do? We're trying to win a World Series. Steel Epstein has won three World Series in his uh, tenure as a general manager, president of baseball operations. Maybe he works side by side with Chris Young. You could say he's a GM, but maybe they're both like working as president of baseball operations. Um, That's just my thoughts. So John Daniels fired. Um, I'll get to your guys' comments in a second, but John Daniels fired after 17 years. He was the third longest tenured um, front office guy in baseball. It was Billy Bean, Brian Cashman, and then John Daniels. So he's gone. Like I said, I think he'll find a job somewhere else because he has a good resume. Don't think he was the best GM or president of baseball operations, but mediocre. And I'm not going to hate anybody. Um, He helped um, us get to the World Series. So I'm going to thank him for that. But obviously, I don't think um, he was the best. So I think it's time to move on. And I wish him success somewhere else. But I also uh, hope this is a a good time to um, just get new leadership in the uh, Texas Rangers organization. Um, so going to the comments from hepatitis. See you later. 
good news for the Rangers. They, the way you guys were heading were for mediocrity, hire someone from the Rays, uh, potentially. Um, pumped. Uh, Ryan coming back from Samuel Sandai. Next thing you know, the owner sells team. I actually do think that the um, owner is trying to sell the team, but obviously this move doesn't have anything to do with that. Maybe in a roundabout way because he wants to win. So when he's winning, that could help the team. Um, Carlos Beltran as manager. I would put him as the highest on my list. I would definitely look at Matt Quattrato, the bench coach from the Ray, Rays. Joe Espada, the bench coach from the uh, Astros. Give Mike Schill a look. Um, I really want to see what Tony Beasley um, can do. Can he get these guys energetic to play? Can they get these guys prepared? Um, last night's game was terrible. I'm not going to say Tony Beasley's not the guy after that game, obviously. First full day as the manager. Um, we got to give him the rest of the season, see what he can do. Um, but the base running was an issue. I think most of the issues last night were Ezekiel Duran. Um, he had an easy double play last night with um, Marcus Simeon. He botched that. And then um, there was a foul ball from Marcus Simeon. And Leo D. Tavares faked a tag up. And Ezekiel Duran didn't see that. He ran all the way to third. And then Leo D. Tavares was caught in no man's land. That guy needs, I think to, uh, Duran is talented. He might end up becoming a decent player. But right now, that guy looks stupid. From Samuel Sandite, um, trading for Jonah Heim and Nate Lowe were also good moves. Yes, but you also know Chris Young was brought in as well. Um, and so whenever Chris Young was brought in, we traded for Jonah Heim, Nate Lowe, and Dane Dunning. Um, but then again, who's to say that was all Chris Young? Um, who's to say like the recent um, philosophy to – change our draft to uh, draft Kumar Rocker to get this high-end talent in the farm system to trade these guys. Who's saying that's all Chris Young? That could be John Daniels. We really don't know who's the final say, but now it's all going to be um, Chris Young, so all eyes will be on him. Uh, from Hepatitis C, uh, no, don't trade for Brandon Lowe. Start rebuilding and tanking. That way you guys surround yourself uh, when they come up. Uh, no, we've we want to win. We've been bad for six years um i don't want to you realize i it sounds like you're not a rangers fan but we've already gone through the rebuild we're trying to come add that so why would we rebuild again um david navarro very good move sam um david navarro i'm glad we didn't wait around this sends a clear message that ownership wants to win next year i i agree and i think the players need to realize that too because if you're a prospect like Josh Smith um, and you're not producing, I don't, in teams in the past, you might have been like, okay, he'll be on the team next year. But moving forward, man, that guy might get traded or go to AAA because um, I don't think that guy really has it. Maybe he's a Tony Kemp player at best, but if you were to trade him for the package for a starting pitcher, would you do that? Um, I might because um, – in the grand scheme of things, he's not our top prospect. Josh Young is going to surpass him. Evan Carter will surpass him. Free agents will we'll probably bring in two, three free agents. They'll surpass him. Um, so let me know. Um, I'm just trying to be realistic. I'm not hating on Josh Smith, but if you look at the mold of today's game, um, he doesn't really fit. Um, yes, he's versatile. Um, has decent at bats, or that's what he's known for, but recently he's been struggling on the struggle bus. Um, from Hepatitis C, Rangers shouldn't have signed. Seager and Simeon should have signed all their money for Trinidad. Okay. Um, but then we'd be even worse this season. Seager's killing it. And no guarantee we get Turner. So I really don't care about that one. I mean, we got good players. Um, it's whatever. Trade Duran and Smith. For, for who? That's the question. That is the question. Um, I could see, I could see Zach Galen being on the market with the Orioles doing well. I don't think John Means gets traded. Um, I could also see Pablo Lopez being on the market. Um, Tariq Skubo would be an interesting one because uh, of his shoulder injury. Who else? Um, 
Uh, no, nobody really comes to mind. But if you look at free agency, there will be. Uh, we'll look at Samuel Sendai. Sign the Grom. I'm worried about him because of his injury health. I wouldn't. If I'm giving out a big contract, I go after Rendon. Um, yeah, that's then Josh Bell, Noah Syndergaard, and Benintendi. I like Bell. Um, I, the Grom's wet, washed up at this point. Um, Benintendi wouldn't be terrible. Nothing spectacular. I think this is the best season he'll have in his career. Um, but obviously, the offense isn't terrible. But I think maybe in teams past, we'd be like, okay, um, the offense is fine. But it's not bad. Can it get better? Yes. Um, obviously, starting pitching is where we need help. But we really need help all around. Like, we're 10 games under 500. We can't just say, okay, our offense is fine. We need to target everything from starting pitching, bullpen, offense. We really need to target it all. And that, that's where I would kind of say would maybe separate Chris Young from John Daniels if he could do this. Because I think in the past, what has kind of made us mediocre is that John Daniels would say, okay, our offense was the bright spot of our team last year. So let's just focus on starting pitching. And personally, me, I get it. Starting pitching, we need that. Because right now we have Koyori Hark. Okay, sure, he he'll have three runs, but he looked garbage last night. Glenn Otto, shaky as all get out. Somehow he gets out of games with only two runs, one run. Some some game he's gonna get shell shocked for like seven. Um I think we need to be realistic. Why are we 10 games under 500? Because we're not good. Um, obviously there's the one run differential and you could look at that and be like, okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, but still a 500 team that's not going far in the playoffs. If we want to be good, we got to be like 20, 30 games over 500. Where are we trying to, we're trying to win a world series. So, um, hopefully Chris Young notices that offense is good. Could be better. Starting pitching, not great. Needs big improvement. Um, bullpen could be out a few pieces. I think you could find those in the minor leagues, maybe some waiver claims, maybe sign one free agent. Um, because you could give out a big free agent contract to like Edwin Diaz, and then he goes back to his past two seasons. Um, I should manage, I'll, I'll like to, I'd get a big payday. Okay, um, but um, I'm gonna log off. Um, Chris, uh, John Daniels fired after 17 seasons. Chris Young is taking over the baseball operations. Um, and we'll see if um, anything comes out about Rangers looking for like an assistant slash GM or another GM to go along Chris Young. But it, it'll be interesting to see what happens from here on out. But if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.